TV, your husband lifestyle channel. Today on How TV. Yes, I think about death all the time. Ah, I think about death every day. The scholars in Islam have made us to believe, and I have read it in some of the um, uh, Islamic hadith and other, that we should be thinking of death as if to say, the next second we are going to die. And so we should always do things that God who love us to do, we should always be getting ready for that moment. Because when you do something now, you don't know what will happen the next second. Yeah, I do. Death. I think about it every day. I think about it every day. Yes. Yeah. I think about it every day. Yeah, I have thought about death. Every time. <laughs> Like, um, well, it's one thing that keeps me in check. Like, I have not said my salat now. And I just think, ah, oh God, what if you just die now? <laughs> what will you tell Allah that this is the reason why I didn't pray in time? So, I always think about it. Why, why shouldn't someone think about death? If, if, knowing full well that there was a time when you were not in this world, there's going to be a time where you're going to live. You get, so, you, you, you can't avoid it. And we as Muslims have been told to constantly ponder about it. So that we're constantly checking our actions and seeing how we can constantly be within the light of Allah, within his, his, his righteous path. So death is something that, that, that comes from a madness of time and I think about it and I, I, I hope I do think about it much more because the more you think about it, the more you are you're careful in dealing with people and making sure you're doing the right thing. I think about it every day actually. I, I think about it and also it's scary. Yeah, I have, I have thought about death so many times. I think about death every day because I know it's going to come any time. Consciously or unconsciously, I think of it. Because the truth of the matter is, we all know death is inevitable and it will come when it will come. At your own predestined uh, time, you will definitely be taken away by, by death. So, consciously or unconsciously, I think of it on a daily basis. And when the thought comes to me, the next thing is to look at how well am I prepared for it. I come from a family where we discuss that almost every day. My father will tell you, oh, let's turn rest today. You still tell you, tomorrow, I might just die. My mother will tell you, oh, you're enjoying, you're calling me, you're sick. You better leave the sun on your own. Because tomorrow, I might not be there. So, in the family where I come from, we, 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 we live like, well, no one knows tomorrow. Every time I do something, I just think, what if I die the next minute? So, every act I'm taking is like, is it right? Would I regret if I die? I, I don't know, but... <laughs> death. Death, you said. <laughs> yes, I've thought about death. So many times. Every time, actually, every day. More often even. Because... I lost my dad every day, so I think about it every day. Like I said earlier on, I used to think the most challenging thing I think in my life is the day I will meet my Lord. Because whatever I'm doing, I don't know which, whether it's accepted or not. So I think about it every time. 
And I think we should all just be good in whatever we are doing. I would like to go. <laughs> I've never thought about that. <laughs> I've never thought about that too. If it eventually comes, I want it. I want. I want that to meet me as a devoted servant of Allah, majorly. Because I want to believe that the best way that one can uh, easily demise, leave the world. It is not my life in the first place, so it is not up to me to decide how I would like to go. But whenever the time comes, I just hope and I pray that it will meet me in the best of, um, of positions in, 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 the, in the eyes of my Lord. I want to go in a state that, yes, I will not have problem with Allah. That is, I will wish for death to come at any time that, yes, I am in a state that, yes, Allah wa ta'ala will be happy to receive me. This question made me remember the last sermon I listened to when even the prophet, when he was about to die, experienced some discomfort when he was about to die. And I like, God of mercy, how am I going to go? Even, even when the prophet went with some discomfort. But one thing I, I, I always pray is that I should be able to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the point of death. I know, you know that people must die. It is very, very essential. But I would love it to be very peaceful. Is that to meet me? in the mosque or to meet me in my room where I'm just sleep and not wake or where I'm just say Allah Akbar and I'm just there. I would love to be and when I get there I want to live <laughs> very peacefully where <laughs> nobody wants to enter. See sometimes when I when when Nepal takes light and every area is, is stuffy, you know. I just say, hey, if hell is real, we must try very well. Look. If that hell, or when you are when you are passing, when you are when you, you you get out of the car, you walk around under the sun, everywhere is hot. You say, wow. If hell is real, we must. And then, words of God, you know, you know has made us to realize that hell is even hotter and terrible than that. So I don't want to go to hell. So I want to come, you know, go back easily and get into a journal easily. I would say I would, I would like to die in Medina, you know. <laughs> it's actually a place where everyone would like to die in Medina. But uh, I would like to die a peaceful death you know, on my bed, you know, with my family and everybody, loved ones. And me, I like to just sleep and not wake up. I guess that's what most people will say. Because when 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 you look at people have you know different kind of sickness, people will have gone through this torture from their life, from this thing, and at the end of the day they'll still die. So I mean, I'll just prefer to sleep and not wake up. I always wish to at least. To be an old person, as in, I should grow up before I die. But I know it can come at any time. <laughs> but that's my wish, anyways. To take care of my children and all. Um, maybe while sleeping, then I should. I would like to go as a Muslim. I would like to die as a Muslim. And, no, maybe before I sleep, I'll say, like, like, la, la. <laughs> Actually, um, Recently, this year, you know, um, a medical student, so it was a day where at the emergency and there was this baby that was brought and we tried to resuscitate the baby and after several hours, the baby gave up. Though I was kind of connected to the baby in a way because the parents are kind of my distant relatives. So that experience actually made me ponder about death really well I've not thought about the way I'm going to go because nobody knows so I'm just praying for a merciful messy, death in my bed as an old man with my kids around just 
at least I should feel fulfilled and I should, I should have done enough. I should feel like I've done enough or like just my dead. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Today's incident deeply impacted my life. It made me reconsider many things. It was a message from Allah, which I think I understood. If I had to, I would name today's story a slippery surface. A Facebook post about how I got too smart for myself and almost lost myself in the process. So here's how it goes, the slippery surface. One Saturday morning, I started my day with a lot of energy, as usual. I thought I'd enjoy the weekend after a long week of hard work. So after a few random activities, I decided to take a nice bath, kick back, and relax. As always, I decided to kill some time as the bathtub filled up. But SubhanAllah, this time a friend called me and I lost myself in conversation with him, completely forgetting about the tub. As I finished the phone call, I remembered I left the water on and rushed to the bathroom only to find that I was too late. I knew I was in serious trouble. I had no choice but to call management. The only problem was, how was I supposed to pay for the damages? I knew my honesty in this case would come with a hefty price tag. After all, I left the faucet running, and the whole thing was my fault. They don't know that. Maybe instead of saying I forgot to close the faucet, I'll say it was their fault. Yeah, the faucet just wouldn't stop leaking. I had it all figured out. My mind started coming up with things which even the devil himself wouldn't have thought of. I thought I was smart and the creative lies started to come almost naturally, especially under pressure. Three, two, one, action. I completely flipped the script on them, started shouting demands at them, even threatened to sue. I'd been here before, manipulated situations, outsmarted the world, each time further impressing myself. I've harassed employees and workers at the bank, insurance company, financial aid department at school, cashiers at stores. I mean, hey, the customer is always right, right? I know exactly how to play this game. I've got it all planned out, from the facial expression to the tone of my voice. Here we go. You know what, man? I'm really sorry. I actually just forgot to turn the water off and this entire mess is my fault. So you can let management know and I'm willing to pay whatever I have to to get it fixed. I don't know what happened to me. Suddenly the entire plan escaped my mind and I was left without words 
but I was struck with the words of Allah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. O you who believe, be conscious of Allah and be counted amongst the truthful. When I read about him, I found him trustworthy to the extent that even his enemies swore by him. It speaks volumes about your characters when your enemies who accuse you of all sorts of things would never dare question your honesty. Truthfulness leads to righteousness, he said, and righteousness leads to paradise. A man will keep speaking the truth until he's written with Allah as one who is always truthful. The Prophet, peace be upon him, wasn't only truthful in his speech, he embodied truthfulness. Not a moment of his blessed life, before or after prophethood, did he ever forsake his faithfulness. Even as he joked, a lie would never escape his blessed lips. The worker who was sent by management told me that the previous resident already reported that the bathroom had drainage issues that were never resolved and that the office would be responsible and bear all maintenance and expenses. I was about to make a fool out of myself and he would have known I was lying. Even worse, Allah would have known I was lying. For lying leads to wickedness and wickedness leads to hell. And a man will keep lying until he's written with Allah a liar. Peace be on to you, the best of Allah's creation. I will strive to speak nothing but the truth and embody it the way you did. Never again will I allow a lie to tarnish my record. Why would you lie if no creation can harm you without the permission of your Creator? Sallallahu alayka ya Rasulullah. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. What is the largest animal mentioned in the Holy Quran? Hey, I have no idea. The whale. Final answer. I'm not sure. I'm thinking it's the whale. Oh, don't think. Final answer. Option A, camel. Option B, whale. Option D, elephant. Option D, rhinoceros. Feed, elephant. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure? The whale. Final answer, whale? Ah, uh, no, I, you thought so. The answer was elephant. From start to feel. Elephant, yeah, exactly. Is how you remember? Uh, elephant. Are you guessing? Are you sure? Yes, yes. Final answer? Yes, yes, yes. Final answer, which one? Will, will. Ah, uh, you got it right the first time. It was elephant. <laughs> I wanted to, to know if you were sure. You were right. It was Phil, elephant. <laughs> what is the longest surah in the Holy Quran? The longest surah in the Holy Quran is Surah Al Baqarah. What is the longest surah in the Holy Quran? Surah Al Baqarah. Are you sure? Yes, of course. I am. Final answer. Final answer. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Final answer. Yes, sir. Final answer. Final answer. You were right, sir. So Bakora. You were right, sir. So Bakora. What is the most special month mentioned in the Holy Quran? I think it's Ramadan. What is the most special month mentioned in the Holy Quran? The most special month, uh, I believe, is the sacred month of Ramadan. Do you think? Final answer. Final answer. Yeah, it is. It is not Shaban. No, no. It is not Shawal. No, it's not. Are you sure? 
Yes, I am. You're right, it's Ramadan. Okay, you're right, it's the month of Ramadan. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Hafiz Oyeturu, popularly known as Saka. You are on to Al TV. Keep watching Al TV. And now bless you as you do so. Masala. Join us again tomorrow for more. I would say rice and pap. Nothing for say but ogi. I'm way way. That's all. A pap, I'm way way. But don't take the heavy meal in excess. Just a little portion of it. Personally, if my mouth is closed and no food can enter again, pap will surely enter. So even when everything still wants to enter, Pap will surely enter. Especially when there is milk beside it. Oh my god. And the milk is cold. You just understand. How TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel.